All right, big purple. The GXP is in the barn and ready for that transmission exchange so I can get this thing back out on the road. I haven't seen a lot of footage of LS4 pulls, so I'll document that. And hopefully it's useful to a few of you guys out there. And if anybody's curious about all the little things I run into. I've done a ton of 3800 W body engine pulls. So we'll see what's different. And I'll make notes of that along the way. First, I'm going to disconnect the battery, drain the fluids, just to make this thing a little bit lighter. And then I'll start taking off the easy things like the intake, the coolant lines, and go over the harness. It's all the standard LS connections, but configured in an awkward way for this front wheel drive. Little progress update. I've gotten a lot of the top end disconnected, wiring harness, the front set of coil packs on the left side of the engine are out of the way. The rears are disconnected and I have the fuel injectors all disconnected. Got the accessory belt off. Most people know the, the hose clamp trick. So you need about a five inch hose clamp or if you put two quality ones together, that add up to about that and orient your worm gears properly you can use too. They are definitely shoehorn in there. You can just barely see some light on this side of the engine. If you thought the 3800s were kind of a tight fit in the W bodies, these are even worse. So we got the nose off the car just kind of sitting up there on the top shelf so that I can access everything on the underside easier and I want to be able to access everything underneath the car a little bit easier as I drain the coolant and the oil and also so that my um, lift will get all the way up to the nose of the car. I'm going to finish disconnecting the harness, get all the rest of the coolant hoses which are a maze on this car. I've disconnected the two hoses that go to the heater core that run all the way around down to below the water pump here. Um, you've got the hoses going to the coolant fill neck above the water pump that go to the radiator and over to your overflow tank on the side here. And then the overflow tank actually has kind of an awkward spot where it runs out here on the inner fender well, which is not optimal. It goes right in front of one of your tires, but that's only if you're severely overheating. Not quite sure what's left. I'm going to climb all over this thing, try and get the engine harness free and out of the way. As I've seen on a lot of people's, these see a lot of heat and this loom takes a beating. Um, you can see a lot of it's cracking apart and just kind of crumbling sitting in the intake manifold valley there. So I'm going to address that while everything is off and try to make this a little bit nicer. I've got some parts showing up for the oil system, the barbell, the bracket for the oil pickup tube, lots of little things. I've already got this front valve cover is nice and clean because I've already replaced the gasket and cleaned everything when I was putting it back on. I'll be doing the same with the rear valve cover. It's right now underneath the alternator, which would be a bunch of extra work that I will be doing to probably get that out of the way. When I looked under the car, I could see lots of just oil mess going on. So I don't know if that's the oil pan gasket, which we'll be replacing. If it's the front seal behind this harmonic balancer, we'll be replacing the balancer, the bolt, and the seal. We'll be replacing the rear main seal. On the other side, I've got the entire cover coming for that. And um, this thing should be cleaned up on the way back going in. It's got a lot of different brackets. It's more of a hybrid of the H-body, W-body mount system because the V8 took up a lot of the traditional space where the motor mount would have been down here. So they have one, you might be able to see, behind that heat shield on the back side of the AC compressor has a mount to the engine cradle. New plan, um, I'll show you here, just a quick sketch I made for fun. 
This is the new idea because I just watched uh, a channel GP vlog and he has fought his engine and transmission combo out of the top side and I realized after thinking about it, like I said, I've done a lot of 3800s, you have to separate the bell housing down here far enough to clear the flex plate and we are not going to have anywhere close to the space to do that. Um, this thing was shoehorned in by GM, um, and we're just not going to be able to get the room to do that. So the idea of pulling the engine, then the transmission is out of the picture. I'm going to drop it out at the bottom and we will have everything disconnected from the top side, which means all the wiring harnesses, the hoses will need to get disconnected. So the air conditioner, um, I'll probably disconnect the tubing to the air conditioners uh, lines so that way that compressor will come right out. I need to recharge this anyway. I have the kit, um, just the Harbor Freight set up. Now it will benefit this car to get that out of the way so I can go all the way around getting the AC lines with fresh O-rings on everything. But going out the bottom, I will lift the car with the hoist, get the engine on the ground, set it on stands so I can back the hoist out of the way since I'm in a single stall garage, no room to go out the side with the engine once it's out from underneath. So I'll come out under the front of the car, probably put some dollies underneath here just to set the cradle on and then I will get the hoist out of the way so the engine hoist will back out and then cradle back in to set the car back down on the suspension and on the wheels because I need to get the car out in the driveway for a few days while I swap everything around and then I'll drop the engine back onto the cradle and put it back together. And we've got the alternator out of the way. Uh, I was going to pull the bracket off but that lowest bolt is going to be hitting that tensioner pulley and I don't want to have to dismantle all that while it's still in the car. We'll deal with it when it gets out. So even though I was able to get the two idler pulleys there and there, here and here, out of the way, um, those are normal right hand threads. Even though the belt passes across them in a counterclockwise motion, which usually indicates reverse threads, they are normal right hand threads. So. I was trying to look that up, didn't see anything online referring to that, so I just kind of put some pressure on them in both directions and they started giving way once I put decent pressure on them in the counterclockwise direction. So right now, the harness off the back of the engine is free. It only goes back to the oxygen sensor on the rear manifold. It has the connector for the coil packs, the white one there, and the four rear injectors and then the EVAP, and then this main harness goes down to the starter and over to the transmission. I've got that all disconnected, the ABS is disconnected, the PCM and TCM for the transmission are disconnected. Now I've got to follow it back under the engine to where it goes down to the oil pan and the air conditioning, and it probably has some wires that go to the ABS sensors on the front wheels. So I'm going to get to that and then I will probably be able to climb underneath and get the last few things disconnected here. But this is not fun. Um, this car, I love it, but it is one step away from getting a 3800 swap. I actually went and bought two furniture dollies from Lowe's to put under either side of the cradle so I can set the cradle on that. Here we are underneath the car. You can see all the oil leaks. It's the reason I'm going to be pulling the engine. Um, currently disconnecting the ground that is, I don't know if you can see it, it's above that oil pan bolt. Um, it's the nut pointing out towards the front of the car right now, but underneath here, 
looking at the rear motor mount, which what they do on the GXP LS4, Monte Carlo, Lacrosse La um, cradles is they notch out this area for the longer V8 oil pan, and then they have a mount on the rear of that pad that bolts to the transmission, along with one that goes to the front of the cradle up here, which I won't be able to get a great view of right now. It's it wrapped in a little heat shield that they come with from the factory. And then you have your typical transmission mount, which is up on top of that pad there. You can't really see it between there, but you've seen my video on uh, making those mounts poly, the ones that are common with the 3800. I'm going to be looking at these ones seeing if I can come up with something different but right now I'm disconnecting the entire harness you can see a lot of the the um, loom has kind of crackled away some of the clips will need to be replaced but in preparation for that I'm gonna be disconnecting the wheel speed sensor wires that go down the control arms and then disconnecting the ball joint and the sway bar um, so that I just have the cradle with the control arms, the engine transmission. I'm going to try and leave the steering rack hanging, which if we slide back underneath here, you can see the steering rack with all of its plumbing. It has the um, Magna steer system, which just kind of gives you more and more assistance the slower you go. It's got a wiring harness that goes up near the transmission connector. But I was also looking at this downpipe, and I may replace it with a ZZP1 to get a better downpipe in there because I already think this is going to look just like the factory 3800 ones. As I went down past the catalytic converter, I noticed our old friend, the U bend, which I am very not impressed with. So. If anybody remembers, in 3800s, the U-bend is a huge choke point in the exhaust. Also, this cat-back connection here right after the cat, right before the resonator, is just absolutely garbage. So it'll be difficult to separate all that and get it out. But I do need to disconnect it from the rear exhaust manifold up here anyway, so I will be working with this next. But making some progress, even in a car that has, you know, some minor rust underneath it, but all in all is still in really good shape. Um, just has a little bit, but you can see the rockers are still probably a good 80-90%. I'm super happy with that. This car has seen decent weather, but not a lot. So that little bit of surface rust isn't really making me concerned. And what we'll do is we'll get this transmission and engine taken care of, and then we will get back to it. A few final notes as I got the harness all disconnected and pulled all the way out. Um, I could bring the battery wires, which run down the radiator across the front of the engine cradle and up to the starter with a ground wire shared with a harness ground right near where the starter mounts. There are three places on the front of the engine where there are grounds. There's one near that motor mount behind the AC compressor. You'll want to get that from underneath. It's a 13 millimeter. It should crack loose fairly easily and then you just kind of have to work it out because it's gonna be almost finger tight and it's not a super long bolt, but you'll have to fight it a little bit. And then a couple, I believe 15 mils below the starter. There's one towards the block and then one on the transmission side, just above the little bracket that holds the harness down there near the tranny lines. Um, you can see I left the bolt with the bracket because I don't really 
want to reuse that bracket. It's kind of an ugly bracket, but just above that is where the third ground is. And you'll be able to get the entire harness out of the way if you want to do that. You can see I cracked the two accessible ones there and there. I was able to loosen those up, but there are two more coming from the inside, which will butt up against the torque converter. So what I'm talking about are these two on the right are only accessible. If you look, it is not threaded. For now, I'm going to get the rest of the things I have to do disconnected, which are just the power steering, the transmission cooler, the downpipe, which I have just hit with some PB Blaster penetrating oil, and the AC compressor. Down to the last couple items, and we can start jockeying this engine out. Okay, we got the cat back out. And I actually lifted the rear of the car. I'm going to set it back down in a minute, but just so I could get it with the downpipe to clear under the gas tank and the spare tire well. Because these catback bolts at the back of the catalytic converter before the resonator are just way too crusty. So you can see I started hitting it with a saw. There, I kind of slid it out the front side at first, but that one I attacked with a 12 mil that fit on there pretty good with the impact, but it wasn't going anywhere. As you can see, they've kind of made their way to become a single piece and get it to focus. So the rust is in full effect there. There's a little seam where you can see the gasket between the two pieces of metal, but Corrosion is real bad on this, so I'm going to separate them. Um, the car runs fine, but obviously an improvement here would be if I get a downpipe, because that inside diameter there, if I turn the light on, you can see that donut really necks down the diameter, so inside of that flex is pretty small. But we will... Get that plus I really hate the fact that they put a u-bend back in these cars after two years of doing a little bit better on the 04 Grand Prix redesign for the 3800 but I also learned what kind of mufflers somebody swapped on this thing um, they basically left the entire stock cat back and just put thrush mufflers on there so they have probably the two or so inch, two, two and a quarter inch inlet, and just a really cruddy outlet, so I'm not going to replace these right away, this thing still sounds pretty good, but I think if I keep this car for another year or more. Now we have everything disconnected underneath the car that needs to be, the power steering rack, I've just got the bolts still holding it to the cradle so that everything is stable while it goes on the ground. I'm going to set it down and roll it back out the door um, when it stops raining in a little while, uh, possibly tomorrow, and then I will be able to put the frame on some jack stands, uh, put the cradle on top of the roller cart, and put the hoist on the front bumper. I've got the front plastic piece out of the way. It's uh, about six 10 mils and two little seven mils that go into it. If you ever have to get that piece off after getting the nose off, I'm already ordering new plug wires to go on this. But I've got to get the rears off so I can get the rear manifold off. I've already got the crossover off. As you can see there, it's got three bolts. If you run extensions from a gun or a ratchet, you can get them, as you can see, two came out with a stud, one did not, doesn't matter, either way it came off. So, my goal is to get that out of the way so that the rear manifold doesn't hit 
the steering rack, as you can see, I've got the steering rack supported by my engine lift bracket that I'm just using as something to wrap around the steering rack to hold it in place. That way it doesn't disconnect from that bellows coming down from the steering wheel into the engine bay behind that shifting linkage. You can see I've got a lot of space right here right now because the entire harness is out of the way along with the front manifold and the crossover are gone. So that entire power harness actually comes right out if you disconnect all the little barbed clamps that go down across the front of the cradle and up the passenger side of the radiator support. So I've got all that out along with the front manifold and the crossover right now. You can see I've got one of the transmission lines out. I've got the transmission dipstick out. You can get that 10 mil. Um, I used a ratcheting wrench from underneath to get at that. The little hold down that's on the back of the transmission. So everything is pretty clear. It's going to be a lot of work to get this thing back together though, which I am not looking forward to, but everything will be a lot cleaner when I do that. Now I noticed that it actually has this logo on the side, which might mean I am the second person to have to go through here and replace this transmission. I bought this car at 107,000 miles. It very well could have had an issue before that for one of the two previous owners, I believe, that had this car before me. I don't know, but unfortunately these four T65s, even though they're slightly upgraded for the V8 model and the supercharged V6 models, just isn't great, but it's a big effort if you want to convert to the 4T80 Cadillac transmission, which I am not even considering right now. That's just way more than I want to get this thing back on the road and hopefully a week or so from now. So I'm going to drop this out after I get that exhaust manifold out of the way and we'll get this thing out on the floor and so we can look at it so we can start cleaning it and start putting a lot of new gaskets in things um, and connect the new transmission so that it can get back on the cradle and get back into the car. Oh, my God.